Let's go live now to Joel Burney. He's from the Australia, Israel and Jewish Affairs Council. Joel, thanks for your time. We have saw the, the Prime Minister join with his Canadian and New Zealand counterparts urging Israel not to conduct this offensive in Rafah. What's your reaction to, to that statement yesterday? Thanks for having me on, Kieran. Well, overall, we're very disappointed with the joint statement issued by the Australian, New Zealand and Canadian governments. Now, before we unpick the bad, let's, let's take the good. The statement did call for an immediate release of the hostages, and it also did call for Hamas to lay down their arms and essentially surrender and bring the conflict to an end. Now, these are things that we support. Of course, we support the immediate release of the hostages and also call for Hamas to lay down their arms so this terrible war can come to an end, a war that Israel did not ask for, a war that Israel did not seek, but a war that Israel has no choice but to fight. Um, now, the problem with this, Kieran, is that uh, these are noble pursuits, but you and I both know that Hamas will not lay down their arms. Now, I don't need to tell you that. They tell you that. Uh, they will not surrender and they will maintain their presence and their hold in Gaza until it's taken away from them. So our concerns with the statement yesterday are abundantly clear. Rafah is the last stronghold. After Khan Yunus is finished, Rafah is the last stronghold of Hamas. There's an estimated four Hamas mm -hmm. battalions held up in Rafah, let alone the majority of hostages. Uh, it is the last stranglehold of Hamas's power and control over Gaza. The only way to, to remove Hamas from controlling the territory of that enclave is to go into that last stronghold. The final and most disappointing Joel, part and element that yeah, was... Yeah, no, carry, carry on. Kieran, yeah. Sorry. The, no, no, the, you, the you, bit you, that was, um, that was out of the, that was lacked out, that was out of the statement was the fact that the Israeli Defence Force is acutely aware of the number of civilians that are currently in Rafah. That's why they haven't gone in mm. yet. And they are currently drawing up plans for the mass removal of those civilians into protected areas before the siege of Rafah can start. But are there protected areas? That's the, that's the question. Are there any protected areas left outside of that, that part of Gaza? The plans, there were leaked uh, details in the Wall Street Journal last week. There are, there are plans to construct, there is plenty of space between Rafah and Khan Yunus. So north of Rafah, in between Khan Yunus and Rafah, there is space. Uh, there is the hope that the pathways for the people to migrate to these areas can be can be safely secured and for tent cities to be built in these areas to house those people. So these plans are being developed by the IDF now. Uh, I have no doubt that these plans will be put into action before any uh, siege on Rafah starts. Mm. Just in, in terms of the critique, and, and I, I understand your concerns and the contradictions inherent in some of the positions that have been put to Israel. But if you look at the international community, Joel, it's almost of one voice, certainly among our like-minded nations. Look at Joe Biden's comments where he says, a major military operation in Rafah should not proceed without a credible plan for ensuring the safety of the people sheltering. Macron said it, uh, an assault would lead to a humanitarian disaster of a new magnitude. So other leaders, uh, democratic leaders around the world are putting pressure on Israel too. So I think Israel accepts that. I think Israel is acutely aware of the issues that uh, its forces face in Rafah. So it understands two things. It firstly understands that for victory to, to occur and to rid Hamas from the strip and to remove them from power, not just for the safety of Israelis ongoing, but also for the future and the prosperity of the Palestinians living in Gaza. So that is one thing that they know. But they also know that they cannot... They cannot place siege on the city, they cannot invade the city, and there will not be a mass ground operation in Rafah until some type of plan is put in place to alleviate those humanitarian concerns. So the one deviation from the United States plan is, is that Biden, correct, President Biden correctly says that a plan needs to be put in place before the invasion of Rafah occurs. Whereas we had the Foreign Minister of Australia yesterday saying that any in any siege of Rafah was unjustifiable. And I think to myself, just because an area is populated with civilians, with a terror organization that has a clear and stated policy of placing uh, civilians as human shields, does that make the raid of, of uh, Raqqa in yep. Syria or Mosul in Iraq to rid these cities of ISIS, does that make it unjustifiable? 
Uh, these were these were raids that uh, we were involved in. The ADF participated in the airstrikes of Mosul, which sure. killed tens of thousands of civilians. It was a bad, it's, a, it's war, it is terrible that civilians are there, but does it make it any less justifiable? Joel Burney from AJAC, I appreciate your time as always. We'll stay in touch. Thanks, Kieran. Coming up next,